Java is the most hottest technology because of its feature and the facilities. The companies like Uber, Google, Pinterest, Netflix, Instagram are currently using Java for their software. And Java has the current population of 4.5 million and the growth rate per year is 2.2%. Java has the most powerful development tools and Java is simple and beginner friendly as well. And in this session, you will learn about the most used feature of Java that is collection frame. Let's see what we have in the agenda. So today we will first see what is Java, what is the history of Java. Then we will see how can you install Java and Eclipse, the ID. Then what is the collection framework in Java. Then we will see importance of collection framework. Uh, then we will jump into the relationship, the class and the uh, interfaces we have in the collection framework. That is known as hierarchy in collection framework. Then we will see Java interfaces. What's the concept we have for interface? Then we will see the difference between collection and collections. Then let's jump into list, queue, set and map. And we will uh, execute all the program using collection framework. Lastly, we will cover a case study for pagebook.com, which includes our business problem. And to solve that business problem, we need to use all the concept we have learned so far. Yeah, we will lastly see the step-by-step -step implementation of case study. So first we will start off history of Java. Java was designed for interactive television, but it was too advanced technology for the digital cable television industry at that time. History of Java starts with green team. So all the team member also known as green team member. So initiated this project to develop a language for digital services such as set-top box and televisions, etc. Later, Java technology was incorporated by Netscape. The principle of creating Java was simple, robust, portable, platform independent, secure, high performance, multi-threaded, architecture neural, object-oriented, interpreted, dynamic and distributed. These were the main principles about Java when they were making it. Okay. Now comes Java project, who is built the Java project, right? Java project was initiated by James Gosling and Patrick Norton and Mike Sreeder in June 1991. Firstly, it was called by Green Talk by James Gosling and the file extension was .gt. After that, it was called Oak and it was developed as a part of Green project only. It was called Oak because it is symbol of string and chosen as a national tree of many countries like USA, France, though they choose end up choosing the language name as Oak. But in 1995, Oak was renamed as Java due to the trademark issues by Oak Technologies. Why this is known as Java? Why they ended up uh, using the name as Java? So Java is an island of Indonesia where first coffee was produced called as Java coffee. So they thought of using the name as Java. And on the 23rd of January 1996, JDK 1.0 was released. And this is how Java came into the picture. And this is how Java developed. Okay. So now let's see why Java is so popular. Almost 3 billion devices all over the world using Java. And what was what makes Java so popular after 20 years as well? I will give you example for all the reason I'm saying why Java is so popular, right? So Java is a platform independent. Java is object oriented, robust and simple. So let's first start with uh, giving example with that Java is a platform independent. Suppose uh, you have a business problem. Okay, and you are what you want to make a problem solution for the business problem. But if you make a problem, if you make a solution for that problem, but that solution is only works with Windows, but not works with other operating system. Do you really think that your project will work for all the company? Because all the company doesn't use the same operating system, right? So you need to think you need to make some project that actually supports all the operating system. You don't need to thinking about that. 
which operating system you will go for right so java is one of them where all the operating system when you write a code on java it supports all the operating system and you don't need to think about other platform independence okay all you need to think of that system should have jvm that java virtual machine so i think you got a good idea that why java is platform independent and what does that what does it stand for that java independency right so this is the main key point of java why java is so popular let's come the feature of object orientation so object oriented program is basically thinking designing coding everything as a object and you can say whatever you have around you all are the objects like chair table fan light everything okay let me give you an example how this object oriented programming helps us every day okay suppose you you have a bike and your bike is not working so you took your bike to the mechanic and you feel the form uh, that is that have the details that what is the thing needs to be repaired okay then uh, the mechanic complete the repairing and you took back your bike so what do you think what are the things you have as a object that bike mechanics forms everything right so what you can do you can make the class for bike a uh, form and uh, the mechanics okay now you can create the objects for each of them right and what is does by creating classes and object you can solve and develop your problem with less time with less lines of codes and create you can create a usable code so main reason of object oriented programming is your code will be reusable okay you can write a concise and easily understandable code so these are the main thing when you go for a object oriented program and the main features we have for object orientation object oriented programming that is inheritance polymorphism abstraction and encapsulation okay and when i'm talking java is simple how i can conclude that java is simple because java eliminates the pointers and the other memory management concept when you write the code you don't need to think about the memory management thing okay what the jvm does for us it automatically taken care of the all the memory okay when you are writing a code you don't need to think that how much memory it will consume that will be done by jvm automatically developer has quite little uh, thinking about the me uh, memory management it helps the developers to focus on the actual problem okay when i'm talking java is robust how can i say that java is robust since the java deals with all the things as object and it can handle any real time problems with much easily okay with the object oriented programming with the objects it can actually convert any uh, complex program to a simple program and java is also very secure why java is secure because it cannot harm your computer when you are coding or when you are executing because all the code is running in jvm that is a separate jvm it does not hurt your system this is why java is java is so popular in today's world as well and java has many features that makes it st stand away from the crowd now we will see how can we install java so i will show you guys how can you install java step by step so installing java first you need to install jdk so what you need to write jdk and then download okay you will get a oracle site first you just need to click on that site and then you will get this part okay so then you need to click on jdk download then you will get all the uh, operating systems so according to your operating system you need to download it so it has linux debian package it has rpm package linux compressor chip mac mac os compressor chip windows uh, x64 installer and window, windows x64 compressor or chip so for my system i am going to use uh, in windows x64 installer okay as i already download you can see here I I already download the exe file. What you need to do after downloading, you just need to install it. Okay, it will give you option. Yes, this is the option. You need to say yes, and all the, uh, and the, your installation will be started. After installing the JDK, 
you have a jdk right in your machine now what now your java is ready now today we will start using eclipse but what is eclipse eclipse is a id when i'm talking about id what is id id is basically integrated development environment it helps us to write a code in specific language so for java eclipse is one of the best id you can say and most of the people use id uh, as eclipse so i will show you how, how can you install eclipse okay so for you will go to the google you don't need you just need to write eclipse download okay you will get the link this is the official uh, link for eclipse okay so it will take the configuration automatically which configuration you need for your system so it's loading right now it has java triple e java id java neon and lot more you can just go and check it out what actually works for you so yeah so my case i'm gonna open this file and then i'm gonna install it so and after that i will show how can you make a project on eclipse how can you make a class on eclipse and what are the uh, convention we use when i'm creating a class that also we will see uh, here you can see we have the official page for eclipse id what do you need to do you need to just scroll down you can see this is the download option you will get so i have already downloaded eclipse for myself for my system so for if you want to download what you need to do just download it click on it and then you will get a dot exe file like this okay so after that you just need to click on it and you just need to install it so installing it you just need to find you just need to actually uh, give the path for it so i have already downloaded i don't need to install it again but for you guys you really need to go you need to install you need to give the path that where your file will be uh, saved yeah and after that you will get these options right uh, eclipse id for java developers eclipse id for enterprise java developers it's basically the companies for the companies uh, who is going to use java their as a their language you will get eclipse id for c c++ developers you will get eclipse id for web and javascript developers you will get eclipse for php it supports php as well and this is the committers and the, there are so many options you will get and you can check it out all these things okay so yeah so already i have eclipse so you can see this is the eclipse i have so now i'm gonna use uh, okay fine this already i have made this uh, class you can say now i'm gonna uh, create a new one okay so first you need to go to file you click on new and then you need to click on java project as your project is java then you need to give a project name suppose i'm going to give you demo now what you need to do now you need to you don't need to change anything you don't need to go to for next next you need to go for and you can see there is a src folder this is a source file folder okay for your data or for your project okay so now you need to go for finish it uh yeah you need to give the module name so if you want to give a module name so don't i don't want to give, create any module name for java so don't create yeah you can see my demo is ready okay under this demo project we have a jerry that is java runtime environment which actually help us to run the code and we have src we need to make a class under src okay so you need to right click on it you again need to uh, write click on new then uh, you need to write on class you need to make there is a class then you need to write the class name but always remember your class name should start with the capital letter right so suppose i will start with um, basic basic of java basic java okay then i will click the public static void main this is the main calling function for java this is the it will call your main function okay i will explain what is public static void main as well after the uh, like in the later in the say a uh, lesson let's see i will add that and then finish so here your class is ready this is how you can create create your project and the class you can make
this is how we are going to use eclipse for today's session now we will discuss what is collection framework in java so why and why do we need collection framework right so collection framework provides your architecture to store and manipulate the data you can imagine it is a container for your object where you can uh, store your objects right and collection framework is basically a combination of class and interfaces later in the session we will see what is interface okay and it has a various classes like array link stack vector hash set and interfaces it also has some interfaces like list set and queue okay we can do various performance like sorting searching insertion using this collection framework okay so yeah this is all about what is collection framework now we will see uh, why do we need a uh, collection framework right when uh, let me give you an example why do we need collection framework suppose you have a data that is already you know the length of the data so you can initialize an array for that but if you if, what if, if you don't have that uh, like the number of the data the size of the data that data is uh, like dynamic okay so how can you use that for using array you can do that but this is very costly and your program becomes slow right but using collection framework you can uh, add some data to your list or set or queue dynamically and it it will not decrease the uh, speed of your data the speed of your program right so this is why collection is one of the main reason we use it actually provides you the dynamical uh, addition of data in your program okay or uh, not even addition it will uh, like provide you addition removing searching delete everything every uh, all the uh, features you can use using this collection framework basically it's a container again so in that container you can add anything you can remove anything you can delete anything and uh, this is the and you can retrieve anything so this is what is collection and why do we need collection okay now comes importance of collection yeah so importance of collection is again it reduce the program effort you don't need to write the data structure algorithm from the scratch it has some pre package pre package where you actually get all the data structure and it increase the program quality and it increase the speed of your uh, data i mean your program as well so this is the main reason why collection framework is important in java now we will see what is the difference between collection and collections right so what is the difference between collection and collection so collection is a interface and collections is a class okay so collection used to represent a group of object as a single entity for the collections is basically defines the different utility methods for collection object if you want to call the collection interface what you need to do it comes under the util package java.util.collection you can call the collection interface and for the collection it's a utility class okay then it's like collection helps to derive data structure of the collection framework we will see in the later in the section how it actually helps using data structure and collections is basically give us the uh, some of the methods static methods that help us to manipulate the collection right and uh, when i'm talking about static method what is static method static method is something that actually very very much memory efficient and it is accessible uh, that method is can be accessible by the class instances even if you don't have the class instances you can call those static methods okay and uh, for classic for the static method static member can change the value of it and can access static data members okay so this is all about what is the difference between collection and collections now comes the hierarchy we have in collection framework so uh, if we have interfaces we have already used the color coding uh for the interface and the class for the interface we have the orange and the, for the class we have the blue color right so basically before we start about interfaces and uh, class let me tell you that interfaces always implements and class always extends okay so this is the main key point you need to understand
Here you can see collection that is an interface and collection, uh, collection interface encapsulates certain other interfaces like list, queue and sync. Okay. And collection does not have any implementation but you can implementation the sub interfaces like list, queue and sync. And list have another four implementation like array list, link list, vector and stack. And Q has DQ, array Q, DQ and DQ are the interfaces, but array DQ is the class, okay? And parity also the class. Then we have set, and set also have the three implementation. One is has set, link has set, tree set. These are all the class and sorted set. That is the interfaces, okay? So this is the hierarchy we have for collection framework. And now we will see how this uh, interfaces we can use in our program, right? Okay. But before jumping to the program, let me tell you there is one more thing we have that is map. We use map. Map also have a three implementation. Map is also an interface. This does not come under collection. But when we talk about collection, we use map as well. Map actually provides a, a key value pair. We will see how map we can use in our program as well. For now, you need to understand that map also have a three interfaces. Three implementation, you can say. That is hash map, hash table, and tree map. Okay. Now come Java interfaces. What is Java interfaces? The interfaces are similar to classes, but with collection of abstract method. When I am talking about abstract method, what does that mean? That means that classes, that methods does not have anything written before, okay? That uh, interfaces is basically have, uh, it's something like class, but it has some methods that does not, like we can declare those methods later, okay? So you don't need to think about, like you don't need to uh, like implement, like the methods are the abstract methods, okay? And interface does not have constructor like we have in class, Interface does not have constructor. All the methods are abstract in interface. Yeah, all the methods, there is no implemented method will be there in interfaces. Then multiple interfaces can be extended by interface. Right? I mean, if you want to extend the interface, that time you need to extend the interfaces. Right? Now, an interface can contain any number of methods. So you can write 10, 20, 30, any number of methods you can declare in the interfaces and interface cannot extend by a class. You always need to understand that an interface cannot be extended by a class. It can only implement by a class. If you want to use an inter uh, interface using class, you need to implement it. You can't extend it. Okay. So this is about what is interfaces in Java. Now let's see what is least. Okay. So we talk about that interfaces that we have under collection, right? So Java list is also an interfaces and the child of collection, which extends the collection interface, okay? So this Java list is extends the collection interface, okay? But in list, you can assure that the insertion of order of your input insertion order will be remain same. List contain the, contains the duplicate elements. When I'm talking about contains duplicate element, yeah. If you, it does not care about the element you have in your data, but it cares about the insertion, the way you insert your data, okay? List can have null value, yeah. The list you have, that can have a null values, null elements. It does not have any problem to uh, like uh, contain a null value. List elements can be fetched using index number. So list element, if you want to fetch a list, is a list element, you can just directly call using the index number. Yeah, I will show you everything in the code, okay? And obviously, you need to understand, you need to remind that indexing of the list is start from zero, not from one, okay? And list allowed to do operations, like you can add something in the list, you can remove something in the list, or yeah, uh, this is the thing you will do uh, using list okay now comes the types of java list what are the types we have in java list we have array list we have link list we have vector okay so what is array list array list belongs to java util package and it helps to create dynamic array 
like the normal array you can say but the, here is the catch that normal array list normal array and the array list i mean in the normal array you need to provide the length of your data but for the array list you can be dynamically add elements to your list right so this is the main cache between array and array list okay array list implements list interface right it actually interface it implements the list okay that is under collection then array list is dynamically resizable and provides flexibility and functionality obviously it's very dynamical i mean if you want to add some new element to your array list you can directly using a dot add method i will show you how can you do that it's dynamically resizable so it does not slow down your program when you do this dynamical resizable thing and then it provides a flexibility it's very much flexible when you use this array list and then come the functionality uh yeah it has so many functions right then comes array, array list class has predefined methods to manipulate the list easily yeah there are so many uh predefined method we have in array list that will help us to manipulate our list easily so this is about array list look let's see how can we implement an array list in java so here i will show how can you do that and then we will go for a practical implementation okay so first if you want to import package what you need to do using import java.util.star we use star star basically it will fetch all the thing import java.util.star dot star is like something you don't need to uh, specifically uh, mention everything uh, like separately star is something it will actually fetch all the thing okay so if you use java util dot star you will get all the classes and the interfaces under util class okay now how can you initialize for initializing the list you need to use array list you need to call the interface array list then the type of the list you have like string in anything then you need to provide the name of the list suppose i am using over here fruit list right then you need to write new the way we create the object same new and then again you need to write the class name array list and then the type of the list that is string and the bracket okay this is how initialize this is how we initialize array list now if you want to add some element in the array how can you add that so you need to do the list name dot add and then the data you have that is dot uh, that is apple so i have apple banana orange and lychee okay so what i need to do i need to do i need to call the list name then using dot add method we can store all the data right and if you want to display the list what you need to do you need to call system dot out dot print daily and then the list name and it will show all the list now comes the indexing number in list what is indexing number so we have 5 9 10 20 in our list but when we are talking about indexing number it start with zero right so 5 the index number for 5 is zero for 9 is 1 for 10 is 2 and 23 is 3 so you have to remember all the time that indexing number in list starts with zero okay and now we will see how can we implement list in a class how can you make a class and how can you implement list on, on over there okay so let's see let's get started we will do this in eclipse now as we see that how array list work let's see in the code file how we can actually implement array list okay now we will see the implementation of array list in eclipse so i made this class in front of you guys so let me make one more class where we will uh, implement the array list okay so what we need to do we need to go to src then we need to do uh create class okay new then class okay so now i just need to write the class name as i'm implementing array list maybe i'm going to take the name as array list okay so my class is public i don't want to make my class private or protected then uh, what we need to do i just need to add the main method okay now this is finish yeah yeah you will get your class that is i made my class that is array list okay now we need to add the package right How, what we need to write import 
java dot it is belongs to util package dot util dot start it will fetch all the things and then we need to use semicolon we need to understand we need to remind that java is a case sensitive language okay so when i'm writing when i'm uh, saying that a case sensitive language for that you need to have a look at the capital letter the small letter we are using over here okay fine so already we call the package now what we need to do we need to write array list this is the interface we have then you need to specify what type of array list you want right suppose i want string type this is string then you need to provide the array list name so suppose i am going to write fruit list is equals to you need to create the object new then array list if you want you can add the type of the array over here if you don't want you don't need to uh, mention that then the first bracket then semicolon this is how you need to call array list okay now uh, you can see if i and run my program yeah we actually this is uh, okay you need to specify which java class you want to execute i want to execute array list okay then okay now let me click to run yeah it's working right now if i want to see that how can you add a uh, something to your uh, list so suppose i have orange apple in my fruit list what i need to do fruit list dot add and if you can see this is showing that string type i am allowed to add on the string type of a data right so add then i need to add into the invited comma you you are always need to uh, remember that whenever you are going to add something in java in string you need to add that invited comma you need to uh, like basically you need to provide that uh, data in, in between that comma okay so i am going to use orange and then i need to specify the semicolon you can see it took it already takes now i'm going to add apple yeah so yeah again but i didn't add dot add so it's giving me error so again, i'm going to use dot add method Okay, so I just write the list. Then comes fruit list dot add grapes. So guys, this is how you can add the data in your list. Okay, and now if I want to see this is working or not, let me check. Again, array list. I want to, I mean, execute. This is working perfectly. Now, if I want to print our fruit list, whatever the data we have, if you want to see, if you want to visualize that how your fruit list is working, so system dot out dot print ln, right? You can use print as well. Print ln we use for the next line. Okay, you have to remember that. This array list I'm going to use and then okay. Yeah, you can see we got that thing in the console that we have orange, apple, and grapes, right? But when uh, I told you that I will talk about static void main method, so Java has the main method that is public static void main. Okay, you can say this is the entry point to the application. If you write any class, any object, and if you write any method, if you want to execute that. You need to come to main method. This is the main key point of a Java program, okay? And always the signature of the main method will be public static void main string args, okay? And uh, it actually uh, pass a command line arguments through args parameter, which is a type of string s. So this is the thing you need to understand every time. And you need to uh, like remind all the time when you start working with Java. Okay. So yeah, we can see that how you can add something using uh, array list to your array list, right? Now we will see how can you like if, if we want to see that you want to set some parameter, 
right so before setting some parameter let me tell you how indexing works in fruit uh, in our array list so if you see that if i say fruit list of zero right and i just write uh, i just want to print that so system dot out dot print ln and then if i want the first element of the uh, fruit list so now if we want to uh, use the first element right so how can you do that so uh, just if you want to get the first element we use dot get method okay so let me uh, print that for you guys uh, you can see that again you need to under, like uh, use the class you want to execute i just you can say orange so what actually happened in our list it starts with zero whenever you are using any list the indexing start with zero with list okay you need to remember that not with one it actually starts with zero okay now if you want to go for set something okay and for freely of uh, for list you can say one thing it actually maintain the insertion order you can say first i insert orange so it's actually takes orange first then i insert apple it takes the apple right then i insert grapes it took grapes so it does not change the insertion uh, order right it maintain the the way you insert your data into the list okay and then uh, if you want to say something right so what we need to do fruit list maybe i just want to change orange with uh, guava right so that time what i need to do fruit list then dot then say it see you can see first is int that is your index number you need to provide then the string the data you want to replace with right so yeah so this is one i'm going to take now i am going to do what that first first index right the zero then what a data i want to get that is guava right now yes okay so let me see uh, my uh, program is working or not yeah we are going to use this so this is i didn't print it now let me print it so let me write that the first uh, first list we use plus sign want to like concat something this is the way you uh, if you want to add some text with your output this is the way we can do that now after setting this we actually need to okay. so yeah. let me check that if we can do this so now i am gonna print the list we have changed right now i'm gonna write this is the uh, converted list you can see right let me uh, run it uh, yeah see the converted list has guava in the first index right we are able to change the first element of our list successfully using set and get method right but if we want to remove something if we if we don't don't want anything from our list right so what we will do so again the same thing you need to write your list name now, right now i'm writing fruit list dot remove we have a remove function then you need to provide the index number right so maybe i don't want grapes so this will be our 0 1 2 so your uh, that index will be 2 so i provide the index number and that semicolon always you need to write semicolon in your uh, code that is the main uh, thing about java so let me check if my uh, remove function works or not yeah so that is after removing the list So yeah, you can see the first uh, list we had that is orange, apple and grapes. 
After that, we have the converted list that is guava, apple, and grapes, right? Now we want to remove grapes from our list. You can see we successfully remove grapes from our list. Uh, from our list that is guava and apple. Now we have guava and apple, right? This is how you can manipulate your array list. These are the main uh, function we have for our uh, array list. There are many uh, functions we have. You can go. You can explore. These are the basic function you really need to know about if you want to. A user array list if you want to manipulate our array list okay or maybe we can sort our list but uh, I just need to check that uh, if we can do that so these are the you can see these are the list these are the uh, methods we have for list so if you want to see the size of your uh, list you can see this This, this, this. You can see it is going to give me the list of the uh, size of the list. So, yeah, it's giving me two. So my array size, uh, my list size is two, right? So let me write it for you guys. Yeah, you can see. I just need to use array list dot tava. So yeah, my list size is two. Okay, so this is the main functions, main methods we have to uh, manipulate or to use our array list. Yeah. So you can see I have already added those things that uh, yeah that how can you use add function in a list? How can you use set function in a list? I have shown you guys. If you want to uh, access any uh, element from your list, how you can do that using dot get function. And if you want to use, uh, if you want to remove something from your list, you can use remove function. But let me tell you one thing, guys. While you are actually increasing the number of the list, uh, the number like the size it grows in the array list that is 50 50 percent of its size. So always remember that that always uh, array list grows with the 50 percent of its size. So these are the main key points you need to understand when we talk about collection. So when you go for any interview, so they ask you this basic questions that how, what do you think how the array list goes, okay? Or how can you add something in your array list? So these are the main thing you need to understand when you uh, like start uh, learning collection framework, okay? Now I will talk about linked list. But what is linked list? Linked list is a linear data structure and all the elements are linked with each other. When I'm talking about linked with each other, what does that mean? Okay, so basically, a uh, linked list has a two part, right? One part contains the value you have, and the another part contains the address for the next element, right? And each element has the reference to the next element. That is the thing that each node we record every element in a linked list that is node, and each each node contains one part is the value, and the next part is the address for the next element, right? So linked list are almost same with the array, but in linked list, uh, the memory location are not contiguous, okay? And they are linked with each other, right? Using pointers. Now comes the head of the linked list, but head of the linked list contains the address of the element, okay? But it does not contain the data. And when it comes the end of the uh, linked list, the last element of the linked list is does not contain any address because that is last. It only contains the value of the linked list, right? So these are the main thing you really need to know about list uh, linked list when I'm talking about, okay? And yeah, every element in linked list is called as node, and linked list can contain duplicate value as well. Okay, and linked list implements the list interfaces that we saw in the before part as well. It uh, implements the list interfaces and it maintains the insertion order as well, right? But why do we need linked list? Okay, because linked list has a good memory allocation. The alignment of the memory is nice. Uh, the inserting, deleting, searching element using linked list is quite easy. That is not easy with the array. 
okay and if you do some uh, deletion or uh, adding uh, some uh, elements in array that is very expensive for linked list you can do it easily okay and linked list provide the dynamic allocation as well is memory allocation is good so this is why we really need linked list okay Link list also had that set and gate method as well, and in link list, uh, in like in, in the performance of link list using add and remove is far better than array list, and but worst in gate and set method, right? This is the thing you need to remember when we uh, start talking about collection framework. Okay, so now let's see what types of link list we have, right? We have singly link list, we have double link list, but what's the difference between singly uh, singly and double link list right why do we need double link list so basically in the sing uh, single link list what we have the node we referred it has two parts one contains the data and the second one contains the address right but for the double link list we have three part in our each node first node uh, like first part contains the previous uh, uh, previous element address then the data and the last and the third part is going to store the next element address okay but why do we need this because using single link, link list we can't traverse backward so this is the limitation of single link list but when we come to double link list in double link list using this part this extra memory allocation part okay we use we can go back right we can go traverse as well this problem it actually solves the limitation we have in single link list now we will see how we can implement linked list using collection framework. So first we need to import the package, the same package we are gonna use that it is a part of util, obviously util package, so we are using util. Then we will use the initialized linked list, right? How can you initialize linked list? Again, you need to call the linked list class, then you need to provide the linked list name, and we will see all the things, how you can use this linked list in the code, right? Let's see how can you do that. Now we are going to create a class for linked list. Okay, so what we need to do, we need to go that our project that is demo one. Then we will go for the source file, source folder. Yeah, and under that we are going to use, we are going to create the class. Okay, so new class. Okay, so I am going to get the name for the class linked list. And when we are, you are going to use the class, always maintain that your class name should start with a capital letter. Okay. So this is the convention we use for Java. So now I'm going to use again the public static void main, the main method we need to have that I explained earlier as well. Why do we need it? Yeah. So now again, I'm going to import Java dot util dot star semicolon i import the pre-package the package we need for just to call the link list now i am going to i'm going to call the link list okay link list then you need to provide what type of link list you want right so i want a string type you can use in type you can't use something different but for my case i am going to use the string type no string okay then i'm going to use curl list that is is equals to new i'm going to make the object of it linked list if you want to again if you want to uh, see that what type of linked list you want yeah i'm going to use string and then the bracket that is complete this is how you can call your linked list okay right so now we will see how can you add the element in your linked list okay so adding uh, the linked list element what do you need to do you just need to use add method the way we did in the same in the array list right car list dot add now i'm going to use some car name as i said so maybe or alto right let's, let's give uh Yes, next, next, next. I'm going to add something. Uh, maybe the car name can be. I'm gonna use Lamborghini, right? Everyone's favorite. So this is how you can uh, add the 
element in the list okay so yeah you can see i add two elements if you want you can add thousands of elements in uh, your linked list right they are actually their memory type will be the way i discussed that it has a node and that node is going to uh, like store the value of your uh, value that the data you have and the next the memory okay so this is how linked list work each and every node is connected to each other okay uh, now let if i want to print the list right system dot out dot printin and then we are going to pass the list name okay so i am going to use the linked list in mode java so you can see uh, that i put that aldo and lambda will you can see the this two already uh, already there in our link list right now we will see some of the predefined function we have in our link list okay like how can you remove something how can you uh, like if you want to add something in the first element right if you want to add something in the last okay how can you do that so for that i can just do curl list dot add you can say you can see there are the method you can use for i am going to use add first so what it will do it will uh, actually take the data from me and it will add in the first right as linked list named in the insertion order the way you insert it right so if i'm going to use bmw right you can see and then if i going to print the new list right so i can add that add new element in the first right so you can see this is how you can add a element that is in your list let me check how it's going to work yeah you can see that bmw came first and then it's come the aldo then the amborghini right this is how it works right suppose if you want to add something in the last okay so curl list dot add you can see there is a option comes that last okay so now you need to provide your data so i am going to use b drive okay i am going to print my new list add new element in the last so you can see that hyundai came the last but this is how it works that predefined function we have in linked list okay but if you want to uh, just get something using like if you want to add using index but when i'm talking about indexing you need to understand that indexing in linked list that is also start with zero right so car list dot add okay so i want to have something using a uh, like index so maybe my index is uh, suppose i want to use a four or uh, i can take 0 1 2 suppose 2 right 2 comma the data i want to give that is toyota okay now let me uh, show how it's going to work right so add element in the third position as our indexing start with zero right always remember that our indexing starts with zero so you can see let me do that Java. Okay. So you can see that add a new element in the third position. Yeah, it means Toyota comes in the third. So how it's calculated? That zero, one, two. So it will be third, right? So we added Toyota in the third. So if you mention the index and then if you want to add some data on that specific index, you can do that using linked list, right? So these are the basic uh, predefined function we have in linked list. Now let's see what are the other predefined function we have. Suppose if you want to remove something from your list, right? So how can you do that? So maybe I want to remove Toyota from my list. I don't like Toyota. Okay. So this is the thing I'm just giving the example, not real in real real life. Yeah. So this is curl list dot remove function. You can see we have remove. So we have two function. One. if you give the string value that which one you don't want or if you give the index value right so i am going to take the string i am going to give the proper data that i don't want right suppose toyota 
right i don't want it and then i will print our list that let's say it's worked or not So let me just execute my program. Okay, you can see I don't have Toyota in my new list, right? I actually remove Toyota from our list. So this is how you can, if you want to remove something using index or using string, right? You can go for it. Okay. Now if you want to clear all the list, what I have, I I just want to delete it, right? So what you will do? Car list. Dot clear. So what you will do? It will clear your list properly. Okay. Then system dot out dot print in. Let's see what we have in our list after using the clear function. Yeah. You see, we don't have anything in our list. It's an empty linked list. Okay. So this is how, if you want to do something with your list, you can do it, right? But if you want to use a pop function, right? If I don't want to clear it, okay? I don't want to clear. I just want to see you, show you that how the pop function works, right? So let's see. We have the pop function in our list as well. Now you can see our list has BMW, Alto, Lamborghini, and Hyundai, right? Now I'm going to use pop function, right? Dot pop. Let me see what is going to happen with my list. So we all know that pop is like just to remove the first element from your list. Let me check. Yeah, you can see that BMW. We don't have BMW. It will pop. It will actually remove the first element from your list. So this is how actually uh, our uh, list, a uh, link list works, and this is the predefined function we have for our link list, right? So when you start working with link list, you really need to have idea this predefined function. It makes your life more easy. That how can you manipulate your list, right? How can you add something? How can you delete something? How can you like if you want to add within a specific index? If you want to add in the first last. Everything you will do, just what you need to do, you just need to call the functions. Okay, so this is uh, the thing we actually do in linked list uh, using collection friendly. Okay, now we will talk about vector. But what is vector? Vector is also a part of collection framework. Vector is like dynamic array which can be expand and shrink. Both you can do with the size of the vector, right? You can store an n number of element in vector as well, right? It is also similar to array. You can say, okay. So it is a part of Java collection framework since Java 1.2, not from the beginning, okay? In Java 1.2, they added vector in the part of collection framework. Vector is also a part of util package, okay? And what is the difference between vector and array list? So the basic difference between vector and array list is vector is synchronized, and vector has contained many legacy methods that are not part of collection network, right? And the default size or the initial capacity of vector, you can say that is same. Now we will see how can we implement vector in uh, Eclipse. Okay, so how can we call vector, right? How can we use vector, right? So as anyway, it is a part of util package again. And we for the initialize vector, I will use Eclipse to show you how we are gonna use. Now we are going to use class, right? So making the class the same process we will do. We will use and then new, then class, and now we are gonna use, get the name that is vector data. And now we will select the public static void in method. Now first we will import util package for it. That Java dot util dot start okay first we actually uh, import the vector import the package now we will call we will uh, use the start using the object we will create the ob vector object what we will do for that 
that first we will write the vector and then new vector that is your vector name and that is is equals to the way we create the object right new vector that is how you are going to create the object of vector okay uh, if i going to if i want to execute the program let me check is working or not yeah it is working suppose we want to see what capacity we it has for the initially so what we need to do let's see i said it is same let's check that it has how what capacity it has initially that is is equals to new vector raw vector name dot capacity the first thing you got right then print the number we have let's see <laughs> what is going to give yeah it is giving that 10 so what we say the initial capacity we have for vector that is 10 okay this is how you can initiate vector you can check as we see how can you see the initial capacity of vector now we will see how can you add a uh, data to your vector right so what we will do new vector the vector name we have we declare dot add the object the same as these the object you want to uh, add suppose i want to add apple right then if you want to add more uh, data to your vector that is dot add orange maybe i can add few more like dot add grapes right so these are the thing i have added okay so let me check that it is added in our vector or not right how can you check that we actually need to print our vector right and we can see the size of the vector right so let me print it that what we have right now you see my vector what is yeah you can see i have added apple orange and grapes right so at least uh, what uh, data we have added in our vector that is already added right if we uh, now if we want to see the size of our array so how can we check that the same thing we are going to do but we will use dot size so if we want to see the size of the array sorry size of the vector the vector we have what we need to do that and plus that we can we concatenate the um, La, a vector in the how we, when we are going to print new vector dot now what we use use size that will give the size of our vector right let me run it so let's see supposed to it's supposed to give three yeah so it gets three that our vector size is three okay there is one more way you can add element to your vector right how you can do that say new vector we have dot add element right in that also the same way it will add the element the data you want to put in your vector right so suppose i'm gonna add dog okay or maybe uh, i'm gonna add new vector dot add element that is cat okay so yeah let's see uh, the new element is added to our vector or not and the size of the vector as well first let's see our uh, like the elements we have in our vector yeah so you can say that dog and cat is added and obviously vector maintains the insertion order always uh, remember that least 
linked list and vector they all maintain the insertion order the way you insert the data to your list object or vector object or linked list object right so uh, if i want to use the same thing the size of the array it should be 1 2 3 4 5 right let's see size of the array what is going to show yeah this is showing 5 so this is how actually we uh, use vector right we implement vector using collection framework right so uh, till now we saw that how can you use linked list how can you use add a list how can you how can we use vector right now we will see the other part that what are the other thing we have using collection framework right so let's see now we will talk about java q but what is q right q basically is a uh, is designed in such a way so that the elements added to it are placed at the end of the queue and removed from the beginning and q extend the collection interface and it follows the fifo approach when i'm talking about fifo approach let me tell you what is fifo approach so fifo stands for first in first out right let me give you an example what actually i want to mean by fifo right suppose you want to go you want to buy something from a store but that store has a queue right when you come to the uh, store you need to stand in the queue right so when you add it in the queue that then you will uh, come to, uh, you will uh, like you will stand in the queue in the last of the queue so basically for that you can say when you add it in the queue you add it in the last but when someone got the item from the store they will leave the store they will leave the queue right so the removing from the queue will be from the first so same thing uh, happened with the queue technique over in java as well they maintain the same thing when you insert something to the queue it will add that thing in the last and when you remove something from the queue it will remove from the beginning right so this is the thing i said queue insert the elements in the end and removes from the beginning right queue does not does not allow any null operation and that will not support it any null operation you really need to understand that queue does not allow any null operation okay and queue has a queue has two interfaces one is linked list one is priority queue but you guys have a doubt that what is the difference between queue and priority queue let me tell you what is the difference between queue and priority queue so queue uh, for the priority queue, for the queue queue is where is the insertion is done at one end and removal is done from the other end right okay but from the priority queue what priority queue does it uh, the elements can be inserted in any order but removal of the element will be in a sorted manner right so for that if you want to have a sorted queue we use priority queue for that sometimes right so this is the basic difference between queue and priority queue so let me show you how can you implement queue with using collection framework so first we need to import the util package we have then we need to initialize the queue how can we initialize we can call queue or we can use priority queue i will show you how can you call the queue and how can you use the priority queue right so how can you initialize them both okay now comes the elements how can you add element we use dot add method to add the element in the queue right and if you want to display the queue the normal thing do uh, like write system dot out dot print element then pass your queue name right now comes the predefined function we have in queue so what are the predefined function we have we have dot pick what is dot pick dot pick will return the first element of your queue okay and when you use the remove function i told you it use the fifo uh, technique when you remove when you use the remove function it will remove the first element okay first element from your queue right if you want to see the length of the queue we use dot size so let's see and let's go to eclipse and let's see how can we implement queue in eclipse using java so we came to eclipse okay so already i have uh, made a class for queue you all know how can you make a class where i did uh, i actually called uh, initialize the queue using priority queue you can see this this is using priority queue then uh, what i did i actually now we will see how can we uh, implement the queue using eclipse in java right so what i did i actually called a class that is queue demo now i actually initialize the queue right i first write 
prior to queue, then the type of the queue that is string, then the name of the queue want to have that is I want a queue normal, then new priority queue, then the what type of a uh, like queue you want that already I have specified. This is the optional. If you want, you can put. Otherwise, you can skip it. Again, I use string and then the first bracket. Okay. And after that, I use dot add method to add elements to add data to our queue. That is orange. First, I add. Then I add apple. Then I add grapes. Then I add lychee. Maybe I'm gonna add one more. That is queue dot add. I am gonna going to add banana. Okay, so yeah, so I have added right now. If I want to see that whatever the data I have added that is added properly in the queue or not, let me check it out. Uh, let me run it basically. Yeah, you can see apple, lychee, grapes, orange, and banana is there, but it's not. It does not maintain the insertion order the way we insert it because I told you that priority queue. Use the sorted manner. You can see we have A L G O B, right? We uh, we came to Eclipse. Now we are going to uh, make a class. I make a class for it. That is Q demo, right? Now what I did, I actually call the priority queue. Called priority queue. Then you need to specify what type of a queue you want. That is string queue I want. Then I add queue. The name of the queue you uh, queue you want to put. That is I want a queue name. That normal queue. Then I use new priority queue. Then again, the what type of a queue you want? This is the optional. If you want to put, you can. Otherwise, you can uh, make it null as well. So I again use a uh, string and then the packet. Right? This is how we initialize queue. Then how can we add element to the queue? So dot add method we used. In the dot add method, uh, in the dot add method, I pass the data that is first is orange, apple, grapes, lychee, and banana. Okay. We actually give those uh, data to the dot add method no, to see that our queue is gonna is taking that element or not. Let me execute the code for you guys. Yeah, you can see uh, it takes and it stores all the data. That is apple, lychee, grapes, orange, and banana. Okay, so these are the uh, these this, this is the main uh, method we can say dot add it method which actually help us to add something to our queue, right? Now we will see that how can we use like how can you get the first element from the queue, right? So let me uh, just try to print that system sorry, dot out dot print ln and in that we will use queue dot. You can see these are the option we have. So dot peak i'm gonna use let's see what will happen with that what is going to print right you can see the apple it will give you the first element okay it will give you the first element of the uh, queue that is how peak works okay now we will see some other uh, technique as well let's see uh there is one more uh, method we have that is system uh, dot out dot print element. If you use dot element, that also will give you the first element of the queue, right? Queue dot element. Okay. Let's see what is going to give. See for element and peak, both are going to give you the first element of the queue right if you want to use remove method if i want to use the remove right so if i want to remove something dot remove let's see what is going to remove according to the method it, it should remove the apple right the first element of the queue it should remove now i am going to print the queue You can see that using remove, what it removes the first element. So it is perfectly using FIFO, uh, FIFO technique, right? This is all we really need to know about Q when we talk about Q, right? So these are the basic function again, guys. I am talking about that. These are the basic function you really need to know. You need to understand if you want to manipulate a Q. That time you need to understand that, okay? 
and for the remove purpose we will have one more uh, function you can say the method we have that is dot home right let me see what is uh, like how it's going to work yeah you can see first it remove apple when i use remove and then when i use dot poll it will remove the grapes right so this is how remove and poll works it will uh, remove the first element of your queue the fifo taking right so yeah this is the main uh, method you can say you really need to have an idea when you start working with now we will talk about java set that is also the part of collection okay so set is a interface which extends collection and implemented by hash set linked hash set or tree set okay but the main thing you really need to uh, remind you need to remember okay that set does not contain any duplicate values so suppose let me give you an example what actually i want to mean that that it does not contain duplicate value suppose you have a five set of data okay where you have five data points suppose 1 2 3 3 and 4 then you put that data into your set it will eliminate that three okay it will have three ones in a data set so what you will get 1 2 3 and 4 okay so this is how uh, actually set works so basically when you want to have a distinct value in your data set not a duplicate one you just want to have a distinct value right that time you can use set okay set is based on the normal mathematical set concept the concept we have it's uh, it actually maintain that abstract uh, concept of set from math maths okay then set allows the null values yeah set actually allows you to have null values in your data set but set does not maintain the insertion order when i'm talking about the insertion order the way you insert your data it will not maintain that okay so this is the basic thing you really need to know when we are talking about data uh, when we are talking about set right set has some methods like set has add method set has contains method set has is is empty method it has iterator method and remove and size we will see all the method in the uh, later in the video we will implement all of them okay now come the types of set, in the types of set right so we have three types of set okay set implementation basically one has set second linked has set third is tree set okay so what is has set why we do need linked has set why do we need tree set right so has set is basically the normal set we use okay and has set is uh not order but it is faster than tree set but how it allocate the number so has set uh put the number in a hash table okay and for the tree set what you will get extra in the tree set when you put your data in the tree set that time your data will be sorted automatically so what it returns it returns the sorted data okay and the linked hash set it is use the linked format in a hash table so this is the main three uh, difference you can uh, say about this hash set linked hash set and tree set okay so but tree set is slower than hash set okay you really need to uh, uh, remind those things that tree set is come uh, like give you a sorted order data but tree set is slower than hash set okay but hash set will not give you a sorted data now we will see the implementation of set how can we implement set right so when we are talking about implementation of set first we need to import the package the same package we are using throughout the collection that is import java.util.star okay now you need to initialize set how you, you can you yeah. so next we need to initialize the set how can we initialize the set first we really need to, uh, we need to uh, mention that set the interface you need to call then you need to call the which type of set you want right string in what type of string that i want string then what i need to add the name of the set okay that is food set i want now then we need to use new then we uh, call the hash set and again you need to uh, put which type of set you want that is string and then the bracket this is how you can initialize set right if you want to add some uh, elements in the set we use dot add method 
and if you want to display it we will display it using system dot outbound printing right now what are the uh, like implementation what are the predefined method we have right so uh, for the duplicate value i will show how can we um, i mean i i will go uh, like i will add the same uh, data twice in the set and i will show you how it's uh, handle those things right okay let next we will go for uh, implementation of set okay now i will see the implementation of set okay so what we need to do again i'm going to create a new class for set so in the uh, source folder i will go to new and then class i will give a save demo class i need to have that right and then i will use the main method then finish okay so first thing we always we do import java dot util dot star yeah you, you we import the package now we will call set set interface right so what we need to do set then what type of set you want i want a string type okay so you can say then what name you want i want new set is equals to new i want a hash set then which type of set i want that is string and then the bracket this is how we declare set right now if we want to add some new um, data to your set new set dot add I'm gonna add the name of Sam, and now what I go, I'm going to add new seed. That's some other name I'm going to add, like J. Now again, I'm going to add Sam. Let's see what how the seed is going to handle the same data twice. I said. It's not gonna use, not gonna take the same data twice because it does not support the duplicate value, right? Next, new set dot. I'm gonna add some new one. Suppose Anil, right? So yeah, I have added all that. Let me print the set for you guys. Let's see how set is going to take the duplicate value. You guys can see, right? It does not maintain the insertion order. First, I insert Sam, but I insert Sam twice, right? One this, and second one is this, right? But it takes Sam for once. So this is the way actually see it, uh, take the uh, duplicate values, right? It does not contain duplicate value. Or uh, this is the thing you can say about same, but it does not maintain the insertion order as well. But if I want to remove something. So how can I remove? So new set dot remove function we will get. Then we need to give the thing you want to remove, right? So I want to remove Sam. Let's see how it's gonna remove it. So system dot out dot print alien. That it's gonna delete it or not yeah you can see I did not use print in for that it came in the same way okay. so yeah I think you guys should know what's the difference between print and print in so basically print is something uh, if you uh, like use print it will not go to the links li next line but ln we use ln just if the output will go to the next line right so it's up to you how can you use your output how can you see your how you want to see your output right so you can see it actually delete the sam from the set right this is how remove works so now let me show you how tree, tree set is different from hash set right how actually is going to uh, make your data in a sorted format to so show you that uh, i'm going to use set that is a in type and again tree set again a in type okay so again i'm going to use set but this time i am going to use integer okay then we come from what i use set to is equals to new 
see uh has it But for in term getting an error, maybe I am doing it. Okay, so yeah. So again, I am doing the same, uh, like the I was doing the same thing, but it does not take int. You need to uh, write the full uh, full uh, word, right? That integer. You need to have a set that is an integer type. Okay, and I am going to declare a set that is also an integer. And say three, but it will be the part of three set. Okay, so let me let you let, let me check that. Yeah, so I we actually need that. Now what we need to do? Say two dot add. I'm gonna add suppose two. Then say two. I'm gonna add ten. Now I'm going to use set two dot add again to let's see it's gonna take the duplicate value or not. Next I'm going to add some more data on set two dot add suppose five. Yeah, this is all. And let me print it out. System dot out dot print ln and we will pass the Set. Now I am gonna add the same thing with the set three using three set object, right? Let me do that. Right, let me just run the code. Let's see what it's get the output. Yeah, you can say for has it for both the cases. Okay, fine. What I did, I take five, ten, okay, two, 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 five, five. Okay, at any way, it both are give me the sorted order thing. But let me add something extra over here for you to understand. Yeah, guys, uh, I added some more value to it, like 90, 87, 12, okay? So, these are the things we added in the has set. You can see in the result, this is in, not in the sorted order, right? So, I am going to add the same thing to the tree set as well. Let's see what it will give us the output. So, if, if it's going to give us the sorted output or not. We are going to check that and how this is going to handle the duplicate element as well. We will see that as well, right? So, at any way, we know it, it's gonna eliminate those uh, duplicate elements. Let, let, let's check. Okay. You can see in the tree set what we got that all the for the both tree set and the has set for the both duplicate values are eliminated, but for the tree set. We got the output that is in the sorted manner. So this is the main difference you can say about has set and tree set. Tree set for the tree set you can get a sorted manner or array and the sorted manner set sorted manner data data. But for the has set it does not care about the sorting. It just care about the duplicacy of your element. But one thing about has set it is faster. It is more faster than tree set. Tree set is not as fast as has set is. Okay. So this is the main thing we used in uh, set. This is the basic of sets you can say about the collection framework. Okay. And we also have linked has set the same way we do it. But for the link has set, it, link, uh, it actually stored the uh, data in the hash, tab hash table in a link format. Right. So this is the main part of the set we really need to know about collection framework. Okay. Now we will see the map. But what is map? Map is not the interface uh, or sub inter, uh, subtype interface of collection. Okay, so this is a uh, different from collection interface. This is not the part of collection interface. But why we are talking about map over here? But 
but map is also used when we talk about collection this is also actually a big factor we use in our everyday programming that is map that help us to uh, pair the key and the value and i will give you an example what is key value pair i am talking about Okay. but one thing you need to remember that map does not contain any duplicate key value can be duplicate right respect to the keys but the key cannot be duplicated right and one key can contain one value only not the multiple value these are the things we really need to remember when we are talking about map so java map is basically uh, like two interfaces are basically uh, used to implement map that is map and sorted map and three classes that is hash map tree map and linked hash map okay and uh, the order of a map depends on the specific implementation that is depends on tree map or linked hash map or the have the like the hash map right so we will see all the things in details okay and map is really a bit different uh, from collection and it is not the part of collection framework okay and uh, yeah this is all we can say let's see uh, how can you implement map so implementing map we have we first need to implement uh, we first need to import java.util.start right the same package we are using but before starting with that we have i told you that we have three implementation of map that is hash map tree map and linked hash map right so hash map is the implementation of map but it does not maintain uh, any order right so hash map does not maintain any order the insertion order it does not maintain and for the linked map uh, linked hash map it is also implemented by map and it inherits ha hash map class okay but it maintain the insertion order right this is the basic difference between hash map and linked hash map right and for the tree map this is implementing map and sorted map and it is a sorted type map if you want to have a map that is in a sorted order you should go for tree map so this is the basic three difference of map i mean hash map linked hash map and the tree map now we will see the implementation of map and we will i will show you each and every types of map how can you implement those right so first what we need to do we need to import the package so we need to import dot util java dot util dot stop right how can you initialize a map so initialize a map you need to do map then what type of a key you want to input like right? your key can be string your key can be uh, in it your key can be float right so here i am using string type okay now comes the key uh, the value what type of a value you are going to put in your map here i am using integer okay now you need to put the map name right i i gave it as a hash map now you need to create the object the same way right now new hash map then again the specify the key value key uh, type and the value type then the bracket right this is how we use but when we are adding some element in map we use dot put function and how we can get the key how we can get the values how we can get the pair everything we will see in the uh, eclipse okay so let's see how we can do that so here again for the map we are going to make one new class under source folder uh yeah new i'm going to add a class right so here we are going to use map uh, demo then we are going to select the main method and finish yeah now we will import the package right what's the package java dot util dot star okay now what we will do we will uh, check like we will start doing the map implementation right so we will call map i want a key type of string i am going to add that that is string i want to have a value that is type of integer right i am going to write integer so one thing you should remember it does not take int or uh, the short form it of uh, the short form of it right you need to write the full form that what type you want or string for string it does not take str you need to write str in ing write the full form 
For integer, you need to write the full form. That's integer. Then you need to provide the name, right? Demo map, right? Equals to, I am going to call new. What type of uh, map I want to call? I want to call hash map, right? Let me check, right? Uh, here again, I am going to repeat what type of a key I am going to use. That is string. And the value type is integer. Right? So, yeah. This is how we can initialize map. Now, we are going to add some value to it. Okay? So, here I use... Use demo map dot. Yeah, we what we do? We use put function, right? To add something, we use put function to add something to our map, right? First, I am going to add some name, and according to that name, I am going to store the value, right? So let's see. I am going to add Anil, and in the value, I am going to add Ned. Maybe he got something around. Not that good uh, a student, yeah. So you can see this is how we can add the data on the map, right? So again, I'm going to add some more data to see other methods we have, right? Why it's taken from here, right? Okay. So again, I'm going to add some. Um, it's, it's a good student. I'm going to add 80, right? I'm going to add more two three more value to show you guys how actually it's working right so maybe John is also a good student maybe the best student okay so what's function it's key okay it's a little bit the computer one This is the last one I'm going to do. Get right. So this is how you need to explain or you need to uh, add your data to the map, right? It actually takes your data in a key value pair. For that, if you want to extract data using key, you can do that. If you want to extract data, just the values, there's the keys, you will do that, right? So it's kind of a uh, pointer, kind of to you can say like uh, using key, you can extract the value, right? Let me uh, just print system.out.println. I think you guys are quite clear why we use print and println. Yeah, you can see we got it. Like for the John, I got 90. For Ria, we got 76. For Sam, we got 80. And for Anil, we got 50. So one more thing. You can see it does not maintain the insertion order, right? As I say, hash map does not, does not actually maintain the insertion order. Let, let's say if I are going to use our tree map, maybe it, it's going to uh, maintain the insertion order, right? But no, but tree map also does not maintain the insertion order. Only linked hash map maintain the insertion order. So let me add something over here for linked hash map. Again, the same thing I'm going to do. And here I am going to give demo map one a new name for our linked hash map. Let's see how it's going to work. Does that give us that? Sort, uh, like that, uh, what do you say? The insertion or uh, like insertion order is going to maintain or not? Let's see. Right, and I'm going to put the same value over here. Let's see how it's going to put, right? So, we will get the difference between them. So when uh, for the interview time, it they actually ask you what's the difference between hash map, what is the difference between link hash map, why in the what scenario you need to use those things. Be sure guys, you have the proper idea that what is hash map, what is the difference between hash map and link hash map and tree hash map, right? 
so i think this will guys help you out let's see what we will get as a output yeah you can see i actually gave anil first then sam then john then ria yeah it's maintaining the insertion order the order we have right let's see if we go for the tree hash map if it's going to give us a sorted value or not right now we will going to uh, uh, use a tree hash map let's see it's going to give us the uh, sorted order in a sorted order or not our uh, output is going to sorted or not let's see so yeah what we need to do we need to call map then string what type of a key you want then the value what type like your value type then the name you want to give i gave a uh, demo map to for tree map and then comes new then call the new or tree map interface and then this is how you can call it right now i'm going to add the same value for the uh, tree map as well let's see what in uh, output we will uh, get from there right so i just need to change the name for them let me change the name for them So here we go. Let, let me just execute the code. Yeah, you can see that first one we have that is hash map. It does not maintain any insertion or order or not even in a sorted order. For a link hash map, it does maintain the insertion order we have, but it does not give you the sorted order. But tree hash map will give you the sorted order. Uh, output right if you want to have a sorted ascending order or sorted order output you can use tree hash map so this is the basic difference between three types of map you guys should uh, rem remember all these things that actually in the interview they ask all these things right now let's see what other things we can uh, like suppose maybe you want to iterate like in uh, printing that map you will get all the value but if you want to have a on the key if you want to just want to fetch the key or just want to fetch the value how can you do that in that case what we use we use iterator as well we use for loop so here i'm going to use for loop and i will show you how you can do that right so first we need to write for then under that we need to write map right then what we need to write dot entry okay i'm going to add entry method and here you need to put the k and v right so here if you want to iterate through each and every element of your map how can you do that or if you want to have just the values if you want to have just the keys of your map how can you do that you can use iterator or you can use for loop so here i'm going to use for loop so what i need to do i just need to write for the for loop and then i just need to call the map dot entry method i need to call then i need to write map and then semicolon your map your map name that here i am using demo map right and then you need to call dot entry set okay so this is the uh, uh, like signature you need to understand you need to remind to iterate through each and every element in map right now i am going to write system dot out dot print ln right now what i need to do i just need to call my uh, value or the key right so here what i am going to do that is i'm going to write map so as i say that uh, you will say it like map right map semicolon demo map dot entry set right so uh, what basically it works as is like a alias to your map right so you can see this is map dot if i uh, write dot you will get uh, so many uh, so many functions so yeah you will get dot get key so what you will get all the key from your map right let, let me just show you guys how can you get all the key not the values you will get only the key right in the maps okay so let's see yeah you can see i got all the key that is john ria sam and onil right so if you want to have only the values how can you do that that system dot out dot print ln and then i will call map dot gate there is any option yeah, 
I got I got the group value option, right? So I'm going to use it. You can see. So let me just print it out for you guys. Let's see. Yeah, you can see I got first I got what I got. It's actually uh let me just off this one. Maybe first it's giving me the value, then it's giving me the key, right? So yeah, so if I want only that, right? You can you can see that we got only the value, right? That using dot get value function, we will get all the values. Using dot key function, dot get key function, we will get all the keys. This is how you can manipulate your data using map. And this is why map is one of the most popular, uh, like you can say, interface we use when uh, we use for our network, like for our program as well. And when it comes to collection we always go for map as well we really need to understand and we really need to have a good idea about map right now we have learned all the concept about collection framework right and as well as map we learned about list we learned about set we learned about uh, vectors we learned about maps and uh, uh, like subtypes of them also we actually look into that right now if we have a case study right the base like you can say a business problem where uh, we have a problem and we really need to solve those that problem using this concepts now let's see how can we solve that problem using this collection framework concepts right so there is a company called facebook right uh, they faced a problem basically facebook is a virtual library software company so this company provides you uh, different types of book it's kind of library the normal library we have this is like a virtual the online library right so as our uh, society is still growing and we all pray for the online uh, services so this uh, facebook actually provides you that online library right so a professional from that company was trying to figure it out that total how many books they have, right? When I'm talking about library, you can understand there are lots of lots of books are there. And that professional, that he actually works in that with that uh, company, he was trying to figure it out that actually how many books they have. I mean, they, there will be uh, so many uh, repeti repetitive book, right? And there will be uh, many book like he doesn't have idea. That's not, maybe they don't have the proper database for that. So they want to make a proper database where they can uh, have the distinct number that actually how many books they have, not the repetitive book and what types of book they have, right? So let's see how can we solve that problem using that collection framework uh, concepts. So first, what we need to do, we need to store all the books, right? So first, the book they have, they need to store that thing into a list. Then what we need to do, we need to convert that list into set. So why we need to use set? I told you before that set is something we use to get the distance value. So if you have some repetitive book, if you enter that into the list as well, so it will directly eliminate that book and it will make it one. So it will count that all the repetitive book at one, right? Then count total books present in the virtual library. Uh, then we will, we can count that set object using that uh, predefined function or you can count that using for loop as well, right? That how many books you have. And lastly, what do you need to do? You need to make a key value pair. So for key value pair, we can use map, right? We know all the concept. Let's see how can we actually do that. So yeah, so this is the code. I will uh, like show you guys how can we do the all the like code in Eclipse as well. Before that, I'm just giving you a brief that how we are gonna do that. So here I use a book list uh, array, a uh, book list uh, like named array list where I add all the books we like they have, right? So the number you are seeing that that is very less. Uh, so uh, if you want to add thousands of thousands of books, you can add that. But for me, it's it's taking actually, I mean, like I was trying to give you a brief about that. How can we actually sort it out? But for the real case problem, there will be thousands and thousands of books, right? As I'm saying, it's a library, okay? Uh, then what we do, Why we actually convert list into set, okay? So we actually initialize a set that is distinct book. Then what we did, we use a for loop, right? In that for loop, that for loop will go till the book list size. And it will add all the 
elements we have in the list that is into, into the uh, distinct book list that is a set object right next what we need to do we need to map it right we need to let's see what type of a uh, like uh, books we have right so for that what i did i take a library map function right then i uh, take a like you can say a list again that is b list i took okay then i add all the book name again okay and uh, i know this books can be the part of educational book right so i add them library dot put the way we actually do uh, the map function uh, what type of key i actually use uh, the string type key my type of key will be string okay and i mentioned and one more thing you can see guys i uh, use that a uh, list right i mean list of string i want as my value okay not a normal uh, list not not a normal value right i will show you guys what actually want to mean by when i am giving a list of uh, value right okay i will show that okay so what i did i actually add that b list value b list that is a educational type be uh, like list you can say book we have in that list and then i put the key that is educational and then i uh, like uh, pass that b list to that library map function right again i did the same thing for novels like the novel books we have i took almost four to five books under novel and i pass that list uh, under that key novel right then i have detective novels for that again i add some book and i uh, use a key that is detective novels and i pass that detective novels list to that right this is how we can solve that code and after that the output we will get the genre we will get right we will get the genre basically the key and the like value will be our books names right so the library will be in a sorted manner if you go to the online virtual library if you uh, like put the genre you want to search for you can go there and you can see what are the books they have all the distance book not a repetitive book right this is how we can solve our business problem using collection framework now what we will do we will make a class for the our respective problem right so i will give the class name at facebook right the company name we have okay so i will go to the source folder then the new and then we will make a class okay i am going to give the name at as facebook so i am going to add that public void in there and then finish right so yeah so yeah you can see i got the class now i need to import the package java dot ud dot star okay so i import the package now what do i need to do i need to add those uh, book name right so it's it's actually time taking so i uh, did it in the previous as well so what i need to do i just need to okay first i will add i will just uh, create the object of the array list right so i then what type of a uh, list i want right i want a string type because my book name will be in the string name right so then i am going to use book list right i am going to use book list that is is equals to new array list So this is how we can create a like object of array list. Let me execute Facebook. I'm going to execute. Yeah. So I actually create the object of the array list, right? Now we need to add the book we have. So it is very time taking to add so many books. So I add that in the previously. So this is the thing. So yeah. so let me copy that so we have at least 10 to 12 and more than that books right so add it right so yeah okay so i'm getting cross file because you can see my book list 
the name I mentioned and the name I add that was not same, right? So what I did, I actually uh, use book underscore list the variable name of my uh, list. Then I add the book name, right? That I have been greatly lean in the element finding your passion changes everything. So we have lots of book, right? So I add those book in my list. So they are actually repetitive as well. So that I don't know how many books are repetitive we have. So yeah. So let me just print the size of the list. This is the dot out dot printtail. I hope guys you guys understand that was the meaning of print and printtail. And please uh, keep nurture your uh, knowledge on these things because. Uh, for the Java, advanced Java, that is the main part. Like most of the interviewers are going to ask some question uh, from this part as well. This is one of the most important part you can say when we talk about advanced Java, right? So, right. So, let me check the size of the book. So, this is my size of the library, you can say. For the concatenation thing, uh, we use plus sign, right? Always remember these things when you are actually working with this collection framework and Java as well. So yeah, so my library uh, size is 24. That is too low, I know. But if you guys want to add more uh, data to your list, you can go ahead, go ahead and do that. So basically, when you start working with the lots of data, you will get a proper clear idea about what actually we're trying to do, what actually we are actually using uh, collection framework right so this is how I collection framework is one of the most used framework you can say okay so now we have this now what we need to do we need to create our object of set just to check how many distinct book we have right so first I will call set what type of set I want string type then I'm going to add distinct book in the library that is equals to new you can use tree site if you want to have a sorted manner uh, like uh, what to say sorted manner book list you can use that but here i'm going to use hash set right so any variation according to your uses you can go for it right so then i will use for and i i i hope you guys know what actually how we are going to uh, you know I mean how we actually initialize a for loop in uh, Java right this is quite different from Python equals to 0 I less than uh, is equals to it will go till the size of the list right so it will go book list dot size this is how we actually initialize a for loop for the for java right so what i am going to add i am going to add distinct book library our variable our object for set dot What we will pass on that i right let's see it's gonna work or not okay i will like add right let me check and after that i will say why we get this error right so yeah why we get that error because we started from zero right and I uh, use that equals to sign. It should go less than the size of the book. You have to be careful that uh, when we get that error, that out of bounds, that y, out of bound y, it is like the length of the size of list is actually getting out of bound, right? 
so this is why we are getting this so let me check that what uh, like what's like what we have in our set object right now system dot out dot detailing and we will pass distinct book like We get the data in our set, right? Now let me check what's the actual site, what's the size of the distinct book, right? So now you can say the library has the distinct number, but actually how many books they have, right? Just a bit. So it has size as well, right? So let me see what is the actual size. So guys, please be sure that you are using plus sign, you are using uh, semicolon. This is the main thing. Yeah. So my library has 15 uh, actual book, but before it was showing 24, right? So we made that uh, if you add thousands of thousands of book, maybe I'm using a small example, but when actually you have thousands of thousands of book that time, that time you really need to understand how set is making your life like so simple how you actually use your like uh, time for the actual program not in that you need to like write a code from the scratch how can you just give that distinct value right so if we don't have set maybe we need to use a for loop we need to use if loop if statement so using those things your program will become more complicated this is how collection framework is uh, popular you can see right so we give that okay now what we need to do i just want that key uh whatever book i have right so i want them to uh store them in a proper journal right mm -hmm. so if i want to use the proper journal right so that time what we will do we will use a map so we know that in map we have key value pay so in one journal we can add the list of books okay that will be the pair right that will be the sorry that will be the value okay so let me uh, just uh, initialize that i think you guys will understand that map then i am going to use what type of uh, i mean what type of key and value we want right now as we see that we got the distinct book right now what we need to do we need to add the map value why we you all want map map because we want a uh, like journal basis book right so we know map has the key value pair now we have thousands of books right now for my case i have 15 book right maybe my five like five books uh, like belongs to a, a same journal six books belong to same journal but they are both are different so i want to segregate my book using the journal right so for that what i will use i will use a map function right so for that what I do, uh, I actually take a hash map interface I call it. Then what type of key I want? My type of key will be string, that is genre, right? So it maybe it will be novel, maybe it will be detective novels, maybe it will be educational, right? So uh, my genre will be string. But be uh, just look and look at this, guys. This is actually important. But my uh, what type of a value I'm going to provide? I am going to provide a list type of a value, right? my value my value will be list of books right so for that i am going to use a array list that is that array list is type of a string right so uh, again i'm going to explain this because this is really a uh, little, little bit uh, com complex and confusing i can understand you can see type of key is string right but type of value is list right 
Why it is least? Because I am going to provide there is a genre is novel, right? I am going to provide a list of I am going to provide a list of detective books. So my like my uh, value will be list, right? So what type of a list I want? That is also a string type, right? So this is how I actually added string, comma. The type of value I am going to put that is array list. Then the list will be string type, right? Then I put the name of the map that is library, right? Then what I did, I use I called new. I use half hash map. Uh, according to your uh, pre preference guys you can use any of them I use hash map then string type and what type of a value I'm going to use list type of a value right and uh, to make the list of uh, what I did I actually add that uh, you can see there is again I use a B list right in that B list what I have I have the book that is the part of educational purpose right so here my key will be educational right and what will be my pay, uh, like value? This B list, right? I added the B list dot add the book name, right? The way we add element in the list, right? So I have five books that is the part of educational journal, right? So I use B list dot add uh, daring greatly, right? Then B list dot add lean in, okay? These are the book name we have the part of B list. Then what we uh, what I did library I I have the map function is library. Then I uh, use how can we uh, add something to the map? We use dot put function right. So what I add dot put the key that will be educational. And one more thing you guys need to understand key cannot be key cannot be repeated right. It always your key should be unique. Okay. So educational then. I added B list, the list of book I have that is the part of educational book, right? So I added B list, okay? Same, I have some novels, right? I add a list, I make a list of novels that is a string type. I add those book in the part of novel list and then I add this, add that uh, list to under novel key, right? Novel is my key over here and I pass the novels list, right? You can see. Now, again, I make a list that is detective novels I have. I made them a key that is detective novels. The key will be no detective novels, the genre of detective novels. And I pass the list that is detective novels, right? You can see. Now, let me see if I want to see all the uh, value I have, right? What I will do? I actually, I need to iterate the map, right? How can you iterate the map? Using iterator, using for loop. So, here I am using for loop. So for loop, first I uh, write for, then map dot entry, the way we iterate, it, right, map dot entry, then we use map, okay, you can use anything, that's an alias, you can say, I use map, then semicolon, the library, the map name we have, dot, we call entry save method, okay, so dot entry save. Now what we will do, using map or the alias that we give, that map dot get key if we do then we will get all the key right the same way we did in the previous time as well dot get key it will give me all the key and dot get value it will give me all the value let, let me check that uh the genre wise uh, like i'm able to do that or not the like distinction like the like uh, segregation of book right in the library that on the genre wise do i have the books or not right so when I'm, we are getting lang error, the most of the uh, reason maybe we are getting lang error because of the uh, parenthesis, right? So guys, if you can, if you check, so you guys need to understand this errors when it's giving. Okay, the lang error we are getting because of that parenthesis. I didn't check it actually. So you can see genre, I guess, then detective novels, right? This is the book names, right? You can see the first what I said that get key. So my key will be detective novels, right? Then the book's name, right? So for the book names, I have this the girl with the dragon tattoo and there and there where none. These are the books we have, the part of detective novels books name, right? And for the educational books name, you 
you can see we got daring greatly leaning the element these are the thing we got right so our data is now is segregated our data is clean right now okay so this is that is the process we can use uh, we can just uh, we use that collection uh, concepts to uh, solve these business problems right this is a very small business problem i have uh, like shown you girls over here but if you have real or uh, real time business problem you guys can go ahead with this collection framework this will actually help you to solve your problem with a very less time and you can focus on your program you don't need to write the code from the scratch for the data structure right so this is how a uh, collection framework is actually helping us right till now we learned all about collection framework we learned about map we saw how can you use that collection framework concept use uh, like in a real time case study right so this is the way actually you can use the collection framework before uh, complete the session let me uh, tell you guys we, uh, like great learning have came up with a very good uh, uh, like opportunity a very good platform that is great learning academy where you will get almost 80 plus free courses that is also free of cost and after completing your course you can directly claim your certificate you don't need to pay anything for that and if you want to do the courses in your mobile you can go for great learning app as well and they have a feature provided that is you can do the course in offline yeah, as well if you want so why are you waiting go and grab the opportunity they are providing right and after completing all the courses you can uh, claim your certificate that is also free of cost thank you guys thank you so much for attending the session for attending the course i hope this help you and please let us know in the comment section below how you feel about the course thank you so much